Harrison Ford. The W League Big Blue returns to Jubilee Oval, the scene of arguably Melbourne Victory's greatest win in W League play. And yet, in this rivalry, it is Sydney FC that dominate it thoroughly, winning 10 out of the 16 head-to-head -head meetings. Melbourne Victory have come up just twice as the winning side. It's going to be a huge crowd on a perfect Sydney afternoon in the southern suburbs, getting ready for what is a mammoth day of football. And it starts with an absolute bang. This match will be something special. And Melbourne Victory are hoping to win against Sydney FC for the first time since February 2014. It has been nearly five long years since they have been victory by name and by nature against the Sky Blues. There's Aubrey Bledsoe in the tunnel. Sydney FC goalkeeper getting ready to walk out with a couple of mascots today. And it is going to be on a perfect pitch at Jubilee Stadium. And the crowd filling up means this could be a contender for one of the biggest attendances ever at a W League match. As they make their way out, Natasha Dowie, Melbourne Victory captain's armband. You can see a real determination. The smile is gone because it's business time in the W League. Sydney FC and Melbourne Victory making their way out onto the pitch. Certainly for Sydney FC, it's a welcome return to action. More than 20 days laying in wait. An international break and then a bye means that their long wait to finally make amends for defeat against Melbourne City in the grand final rematch has finally arrived. And it is, belatedly in round four, their first home game of the season as well, which certainly adds to the spectacle. It is Rebel Female Football Week in the W League and fantastic to see so many women and girls walking out onto the pitch with the players to line up as part of this special occasion. And let's see how the teams line up today. Starting with the home side, Sydney FC, who welcome Alana Kennedy, the Matilda in for the first time this season. Danny Colaprico back from international duty with the USA and Princess Abini gets a start as well. For Melbourne victory, just the one change. Grace Ma comes back from an ankle injury scare, which only ruled her out for the one game. That's at the expense of Melinda J. Barbieri. Leah Privatelli drops out of the squad, and Kyra Cooney-Cross gets onto the bench for the first time this season. There is Ante Juric, Sydney FC coach. Enjoyed two wins from two against Melbourne victory last season. The match played last year was at Cromer Park up in Manly. This time they come to Jubilee Stadium. Ladies Jeff Hopkins looking rather calm at the moment. Said the flight in after the chaos at Sydney Airport during the week had a few little wobbles, but as you can see there from the smile on his face and Cat Smith, his assistant, it's been a pretty calm week off the back of triumph in the derby. Today's referee is Rachel Mitchinson, her assistants Delfina Demoski and Maggie Price, and Hassan Joma will be the fourth official. Special coin for the coin toss taking place out on the ground as part of Female Football Week. You can see Teresa Polias, the Sydney FC captain there, along with Natasha Dowie. Team photo including Sydney FC player from last season, Emily Sonnet, who's in the country on holiday at the moment. Couldn't convince her to pull on the boots, the US international. There's Caitlin Ford back in the Sydney FC Sky Blue, coming off that hat trick for the Matildas against Chile. And in the Melbourne victory camp, Emily Gilnick scored for the Matildas, scored for victory in the derby. Broke a bit of a goal drought for her in W League, but she is up to 30 goals now, which is a very high tally in context of the 11 year history of this competition. One of the leading players. How will Sydney FC defend today? Alana Kennedy there with the bun on the right of the screen. Her first game back this season. Surgery in preparation for the World Cup. Now it's all about match fitness and form to get ready for France. And as expected, she'll return straight to the centre of that defence to lead the Sydney FC side. Natalie Tobin 
And Sofia Huerta going in for some high tens. There's Grace Ma. Was in a moon boot this time last week, but all precautionary. Good to see her getting the start again today. So all in readiness then. It is an absolutely perfect day in Sydney. And a contest with plenty of intrigue gets underway. Sydney FC against Melbourne Victory. Sarah Walsh, I can't call this one. How are you feeling as the action finally gets underway? Well, I feel like we're going to see some good football. Both teams want to get the ball on the deck and, and play with it. And they all have the play. The, both teams have the players to be able to do that. And there's been a lot of talk about the strike force for both teams, but the midfield equally. You've got Colaprico, you've got Gracie Ma, Nan for, for victory. They almost equal each other out. So it'd be good to see tactically how they how they line up against each other and how they actually use their width, how they how they work between the lines. Long free kick here from Samantha Johnson, and Kennedy gets her first touch and puts it out for a throw. Angie Beard to bring it in for victory. Throw looking for Weatherholt and skipping off Teresa Polias. No, referee says that will be a goal kick, and Weatherholt right there on the scene. Polias happy to leave the scene without conceding an early corner kick. The throw in was early. She gets a touch here, touches Teresa Polias, which is. Uh, Clear out for a corner. Get away with one there, Sydney. Aubrey Bledsoe between the sticks. Beard. Sam Johnson. Little back heel from Christine Nairn. Dowie couldn't quite take the ball. Grace Ma. And now Tegan Allen playing it right back for victory. Happy to defer back to Laura Alloway. And now Gilnick called into action, but couldn't make ground before the touchline arrived. Will be a throw. Alloway through to defend, and now Gilnick. Puerta happy to steady for Sydney and try to pick a pass, but that one is misdirected and will eventually snake its way out for a goal kick. Well, it's interesting for Sydney, their, their top three players, they're all quite similar. Lana Kennedy looking to play that in behind early it's going to require given that they are very similar players they're pacey princess have been lisa devana lisa devana interesting is playing out on the left used to seeing her play on the right and cut in on her left but it's going to require caitlin ford to drop in and actually whilst players are running away from the ball she's going to have to provide that service in front man with a searching ball melina Ayres will go chasing where to guarding her Ayres. grace Ma. Egan Allen bombing forward down the right side, but good tracking from Devanna. Marking back, and now Danny Colaprico to Devanna, trying to exploit the other way. Allen backtracking, and Devanna building ahead of steam here, Lisa Devanna. Then a burst of acceleration, and it's nearly turned in at the near post. Well, that was a close call here for victory, and we're starting to see the benefits of actually having Lisa Devanna start out on the left. You can see she's always going to take it to the byline. And she made the run early. They played it early. She's such a quick outlet. She was always going to line up Allen and, and get on her left foot. But there's nothing you can do against that sheer pace. And that was actually quite close. Dumont's goal kick finds Grace Ma. Gilnick. Allen. Dumont, first time clearance, but straight to Kennedy. And the shout of time from Ante Juric. Kennedy is going to take a few metres and then find Caitlin Ford. Devanna has already shown that she's up for this one. And Kennedy, continuing the run, was waiting for the tap in as Sam Johnson cleared away. Well, they've already been able to turn victory around. Ford. Rachel Suter. Devanna wrong footed. Allen's clearance and Natasha Dowie, the most advanced victory player, being guarded by Nat Tobin. You can already see the crowd on the hill on the outer side making the most of 
the opportunity to sit in the sun and enjoy things. Look at that, fantastic scenes already. Plenty of people getting in to enjoy some W League action. The sold out sign has gone up today, so the crowd's only going to build as it goes on. Dowie, a shot on the angle! Natasha Dowie, hot shot indeed! Melbourne victory strike first! Do not give Dowie a look in that sort of range. Pinpoint! Well, on my word, this finish. Now, this is a finish of the highest quality. And there was a complete pace mismatch here. You can see Dowie peels off the shoulder and makes that run in early. And Tobin was flat-footed, but she's popped this one up and struck it sweetly far post. There's absolutely nothing Bleslow could do about this. She has, had, she has hit that sweetly. And she doesn't miss from there. She only needs one chance in front of goal today, and she's made it. What a start for Melbourne victory. And Natasha Dowie, the spearhead of the team, has a foothold in the game well and truly now. And the foul here is going to go Melbourne victory's way. Dowie's second goal of the season. There is some good news for Sydney FC. Melbourne Victory has never kept a clean sheet against Sydney FC in the W League. Well, look at the bounce on this. He, he sits it up perfectly. Aubrey Bledsoe, perhaps the most stunned spectator of all, watching that one nestle in the bottom corner. And now Victory with something to defend in this game. Alloway. Caitlin Ford with a lone press at the moment. And now a few more will be drawn up the pitch. Man, back to Dumont. And the hurried pass goes out. Puerta held up here. Actually curling it to Colaprico. Weaving and winding away Colaprico from Weatherholt. Battle of Americans. And then Ma backtracking, dispossesses Ford. Dowie working very deep and getting grappled by Alana Kennedy. Referee's whistle not forthcoming. Well, we've got a great matchup on our hands there. Alana Kennedy up against Dowie. Dowie, we're, we're used to seeing her so many times drop in off the defence and pick up the ball and turn. Not that time. See it there again in the corner. Dowie's first thought was, where's the whistle? Can be getting on with the job. Suter. And that one's been blocked by Tegan Allen, but Teresa Polias is there to retrieve. Kennedy. Legazzo. Sydney trying to find some composure after falling behind early. They're not exactly going at breakneck speed. Victory happy to sit back and watch the passes exchange, and then an error comes. Well, they're set up with their shape they're perfectly well. There's absolutely no room for any players to pick up the ball between the lines, and they're just drifting side to side. They're very compact. It's going to be very hard to break them down today. Ford will be a key to trying to do that. Alloway chasing out to Rubini. Keeps it in this time. And then telegraphed the pass. Grace Ma knocking it away. It hasn't gone out here. He's up, ball kid. Don't throw it in just yet. And then Huerta tries to steal 20 metres. The referee is eagle-eyed to that. Legazzo's header. Johnson. Ibini. Colaprico, early ball. Devana versus Allen has been... Sydney's matchup of choice in these early stages. And then trying to skip past, Devanna just knocked it a little too far out in front. Well, it was a better play there from Sydney FC. And it all started from Princess Abini, who won the ball on the right, and they shifted early. They're able to switch it out to get Lisa one on Lisa Devanna one on one with Allen. You can see that's the strategy today. Try to linking up their wide players up against the fullbacks. Tegan Allen, who only completed 90 minutes for the first time in the Melbourne Derby for the first time in 11 months after an ankle reconstruction. Back 
backing up and starting again today. As that ball runs out. Melbourne Victory have had a fixture at right back in the last three seasons, Annabelle Martin, but the arrival of Tegan Allen and her finding fitness means that there's now a bit of competition for that spot in the team. Martin on the bench again today. Colaprico. Tobin. Suter linking up with Legazzo. And Allen jumping the pass there. Able to win it back for Gilnick. And the pass a little shallow. Tobin. Devanna. Sam Johnson happy for that to go overhead. Angie Beard sweeping onto it. And a bean, he's done very well there to put Beard off. Colaprico. Caitlin Ford. Back heel was coming. Colaprico knew exactly where to run. And now Ibini with a probing cross. And Tegan Allen needed a good first touch. The pass not quite able to match. Legazzo, the pressure still on. Pelias shoved over. Play continues. Legazzo. Alloway slices that one out for a corner. Sydney really working that left flank and Tegan Allen over it right back early. Well, they've recycled that out from the right and they're showing patience in their build-up to be able to build through the middle. They weren't able to cross out that channel there. That's the one time they haven't been able to, victory in defence. But that balling was stunning here from Princess Abini. Really should have been attacked. But victory are holding out really well. Corner kick. And Kennedy is the target. And even though she made contact, wasn't able to turn it back towards goal. Saw it in the Asian Cup. We've seen it at club and country. Alana Kennedy at set pieces, particularly corners, is so difficult to mark. And normally her heading ability in front of the net is as good as it gets in the Australian game. Well, in both matches for the, the Chile matches, it was um, they really struggled to find her head. I, I remember, recall once... Um, obviously, her players did quite well blocking her run. Legazzo getting involved in the game now. Had a quiet first five or six minutes, but since Sydney fell behind, has thrust herself into the action. That pass from Ayres, the giveaway. Tobin. Suter. The shout of play quickly coming from the Sydney sideline, but Melbourne Victory organised at the moment, holding Sydney up. Tobin's pass to Ford. Devanna made the run. Ford couldn't find a passing channel. And Benz in conceding a foul. the halt to Tegan Allen. Tobin, Dowie lurking. And then Suter, and that's the effect of perceived pressure more than anything. Sydney happy to give away the throw. Taken quickly, Dowie forces Kennedy into the action. Suter again, safety first. Well, they've been a little bit reactive in defence, Sydney FC. You can see no one's actually picking up Natasha Dowie. Christine Nairn now, a low cross, and Tobin straight back out from where the last throw was. Nairn, who has the most passes into the penalty area in the W League so far this season. Not a surprise working in that attacking midfield role. Gilnick, a cutback, airs, and sent that one sky high. Well, this is great work on the right-hand side here from Nairn. See, so she plays that in, allows Emily Gilnick to hit this first time. And you can see there Natasha Dowie has peeled off, which has opened up the space for Ayres, who's obviously picked it up. Probably would want to have that one again to keep it down. You can see she was leaning back. But they've looked dangerous in attack. And you're right with the point you make, Sarah, that Sydney FC's defending has had a bit of apprehension and fear to it in these opening stages. Well, Natalie Tobin and, and Rachel Suter are not uh, centre-backs. 
Sabini here, after winning the physical duel, Colaprico is going to shoot from distance, and it's gone just wide left. No touch from Dumont. Danny Colaprico threatening. Well, this shot had some strength behind it. She found herself with open space. Princess Sabini has been lively early here today. Colaprico makes the run through, touches it just to set herself up to hit it first time, and it wasn't far away. Casey Dumont looked like she had it, had it covered. Colaprico has three W League goals, all in the red of Adelaide, including that absolutely beautiful free kick up in Newcastle last year. So over a dead ball, you can expect her to be lining up. Not bad from distance in open play either. Colaprico is back into the action once again here. Sydney forced backwards, and that's where play tends to slow down for them. See if Bledsoe can keep it quick here. Kennedy. You can see how high the line is for victory. They pushed out very quickly. They're obviously trying to crowd the midfield, so there's no easy through balls for, for them to be able to play through. Teresa Polias and Colaprico. And Sydney FC get that, that passing game in the midfield right. It's where they break open teams. Kennedy surveying the options. Ops for Abini, and now the run continues from Huerta. And Allen once again is the first player to react underneath the ball. Just leaping over the head of Caitlin Ford. Lisa Devanna couldn't make ground in at the back post. Huerta. Abini now. He's got the march here, Princess Abini. Question of the cross, and there's no sky blue shirt on the end of it. Running all the way out to right back. Gilnick, a lot of trust in Weatherholt. And Solver into trouble there. Free kick, Sydney FC. And Weatherholt, a real preventative measure with that crunching challenge. Well, the challenge had to be made. Colaprico is off. See Gilnick's got this beautiful touch on the inside, but... Sydney FC up here. And Colaprico will dust herself off. And one of the dead ball specialists is going to go to work right here. Chicago Red Stars, when she's in the NWSL, won her first United States senior cap against Portugal in the international break. And this free kick is on to the head of Huerta. And it is Sydney's first shot on target, saved by Dumont. You knew the ball in was great. It had good pace on it, good bend too. Only needed a flick on here from Huerta. Sydney FC really starting to swing the pendulum in their favour now. General play, long passing chains. Victory looking for a response, but once again, Sydney take over. Well, what uh, Melbourne Victory actually struggling in defence is when uh, you know, Lisa Devana has switched over to the right-hand side. Their full-backs and their, their top wide players are actually switching. Kennedy, Ebini tried to take the ball and roll. Allen not falling for that. A couple of bobbles. Who wants the ball most? Polias is the player. Kennedy once more. And this time, well... Casey Dumont has got a touch here and thus is going to have to go and scramble to prevent it going out for a corner. Ultimately, Babs could have let it sail out for a goal kick, but all's well that ends well. Well, Lana Kennedy obviously saw uh, Casey Dumont off a line and if she hit that, if she hit that accurately, that's probably in. Legazzo, Ibini. Sofia Huerta. Ford. Devanna's in space out on the left. Can they find her? Colaprico does find Devanna, but victory numbers close in. Devanna. Ford. Ibini goes to ground. Play continues. Sam Johnson getting in on Princess Ibini legally. Now Dowie. Tegan Allen. Alloway, Sydney pressing, Legazzo physical on Ma, and possession is won back by Sydney. Ford, turn and go. And now Devanna. And 
Angie Beard wills herself onto the ball, but it's not going to find the safety of the touchline yet. And now a deflection is going to sit up kindly for Casey Dumont, who fields it easy as you like. Well, Victory really struggling when Caitlin Ford drops off the line, because when she drops off, she opens up a space that her midfielders are running into. And they're not very organised Good. in open play at the moment, Victory. Dowie. Able to buy some time, Sydney FC throw. Polias. Back to Tobin. <laughs> 20 minutes ticked over. Natasha Dowie's goal in the fifth minute, the difference between the teams so far. Victory looking for just their third ever win against Sydney FC in the W League. Ebini. That ball. A little over hit that gives us the chance to throw down to pitch level and check in with Glenn Lauder. Afternoon, Tao. Yeah, Sydney have looked really lively since uh, going down that goal in the fifth minute. Uh, Ante Juric, standing very close to me down on the touchline, has been very, very happy with uh, their entries into the 18 yard box and uh, would like to see a couple of more Sydney FC players getting in there to possibly finish off those chances, but you get the feeling uh, that it might not be far away. Have to agree with you, Glenn. These two teams. Sydney and Victory coming into today's game, leading the league in total shots, averaging 18 a game. So they're definitely going to keep creating and keep attacking. And as Alloway's long ball here looks for Dowie, could we get a replica? Dowie once more got the feeling, and this time a good save by Bledsoe, and the follow-up is denied by Kennedy. Well, when Natasha Dowie is having a field day on, on Nat Tobin, Nat Tobin again getting caught flat-footed. Tash Dow is the last player you want to give space and time on the ball inside the box. She's running right at the moment, Natasha Dowie. Will be led so. Sydney's American goalkeeper coming up with a very important save. That really could have been 2 0, and now it still may be with Angie Beard nearly drifting in a cross shot that lands on the roof of the net. Well, they were lucky here for Alana Kennedy. You could see she's uh, Tash Dowie's running off the shoulder, just uses her body to make sure that she gets that first time ball, hits it at the keeper, and this was almost very close here. Alana Kennedy stretching out with desperation defence, but look at Tash Dowie. Does she not have a nose for an ability to be able to get, well, be first to the ball every single time? She makes that run early and the ball's played. You can see there, Sydney leading total shots, but Victory has the goal to show for it. As we mentioned, these two teams leading the league in shots on goal. Playing true to form on what we've seen so far. Sydney again steady. Taking a far more patient build-up than Melbourne Victory, who've been able to send the frights through that sky blue defence whenever they go forward. Now a long ball here from Suter, which Alloway will intercept. Under duress. Neat touch from Ford into the path of Devana. Yabini waiting in the area. So Devana back to Colaprico. This is shooting range. And Colaprico can't quite bend it enough. Well, it was a good attack again. Loving having Lisa Devana playing out left. She's got the pace and the threat of her being able to go to the byline. She cuts back in here. But you can see what that does into the middle. Victory are, are, are defending so narrow right now that it's almost like they're happy for Lisa Devana to pick up the ball as long as she's wide. Legazzo's touch won't quite work out. Has to go and chase it once again. Putting it off Matilda's teammate Gilnick. Suter. Savannah against Allen. Ford. And the return pass not forthcoming. Alloway's interception. Grace Maher. Back to Sam Johnson. And that's a giveaway by Johnson. Legazzo. Sydney trying to capitalise. Legazzo with the aid of a deflection. And the parry from Dumont will send it behind for a corner. Well, that's a great hit save here. Casey Dumont's down from it. She had to cover a lot of ground to, to get a hand on this one. It's taken a deflection. 
You'd see Johnson turns the ball over. Great defence here from Chloe Legazzo, who read it quite well. She's looked up and had the shot. Caitlin Ford was offside. You can see that the defence just drop. Happy for the shot to be had from that far out. And was Dumont's back up now. Legazzo, who scored at Amy Park against Melbourne Victory last season. Calabrico to take the corner. And it's going to fall in the six-yard box, but it was all victory. Off heads, and then Melina Reyes slicing away. Jeff Hopkins still not happy with how they defended it down in the technical area. Devanna. Rachel Souter. Victory sitting a lot deeper this time. Well, there's not been a time where they don't have 10 players behind the ball. Tasha Dowie is the one that stretches the defence and stays up high. It makes it difficult for them to attack like that because it's hard to get the numbers forward on the counter, but it's this kind of approach is working for them. As you can see, on the right of your screen, Victory's defensive line just reading where Sydney are. Still hanging back a bit rather than pushing up here, anticipating the long ball, and it works out as Puerta donates it back to Allen. Gilnick can't out Fox Legazzo, but then can out muscle it. Weatherholtz into space for Gilnick, and we know this is where she can build up ahead of steam. Gilnick, Dowie calling for it in the middle. And it's onto the head of Dowie, sitting up for Ayres. Can she nanwill herself onto the ball? Not quite. And in the end, it may have been a handball from Christine there. Yeah, the referee's called for a handball here, but it was a great attack again. Emily Gilnick calling for the ball. Letting Weatherholt know where she wanted, to play, wanted it played. You see this counter-attack kind of football's working for him. The ball in wasn't great. Handball there from Nan. Look, Sydney FC got a little bit lucky then. saw Gilnick dominate the Melbourne Derby, roaming down that right side. Sydney FC will surely have taken the opportunity to do their homework and come up with some plans to stop her owning that flank. That's the sort of cross Melbourne victory we'll be hoping to replicate as the game goes on. Kennedy, Devanna. Sam Johnson drawn out from the centre of defence and Devanna pinpoint out to Caitlin Ford cheeking forward and now Devanna scuffed shot Sydney still on the attack though Colaprico Puerta past Beard and over the head of all in the penalty area well something they're doing so well is getting their full backs engaged into this game Huerta has obviously plays played up top for, uh, for Adelaide United so she's familiar with that position but they're looking to link her in every time and it's creating that overload. They've got an extra player to deal with. Service in wasn't great. See Sydney with double the number of passes of Melbourne victory. Dominating possession, but behind on the scoreboard. Colaprico. Intricate play with Devanna. Has another pass this time, hoping for Rabini, but Allen intercepted. Tobin, Colaprico, totally missed time. The back heeled flick. Weatherholt. And Allen, running out of space, had no choice but to try her luck down the line. Nan bombs it long, and Dowie. One on two here, Natasha Dowie. is going to go to work on Nat Tobin once more. And this time, Tobin gets the better of the duel. But the danger is not averted. Gilnick, a sweeping ball. And Bledsoe with a confident catch. Well, the other issue that Sydney FC are having is Rachel Suter's getting caught out of position time and time again, which is leaving Nat Tobin exposed up against one of the strikers in the league, one of the best strikers. So Johnson went to ground, had to time it well and did. Gilnick, Colaprico. And that pass left Devanna flat-footed. 
as we approach the half hour mark, a chance for Victory to take a deep breath. The lead they've held since the fifth minute. Sydney FC have certainly dominated general play since then, but Victory have had the more dangerous chances on the counter. Quetta's header. And fall to Nairn here, and the channel is open for Dowie. And then physical defending from Tobin had to go. And left Dowie prone on the turf after winning the ball. Next option. But a giveaway like that, Sarah, can be so deadly. Christine Nairn in the attacking third is right now one of the dominant players in the W League, and you don't want to give her the ball in that sort of position. Gazzo. Huerta. And Angie Beard this time. Out points Huerta. Looking for an option. Has to go back to Johnson. A little risky, but Nairn is in space. And then just got caught from the blind side by Abini. Shanking that pass out for a throw. Look at the, uh, the amount of space between N Natasha Dowie and her midfield. They're really not bothered about Sydney FC picking up the ball in between there. Really compact, sitting in deep. There's absolutely nowhere to go for the likes of Colaprico to pick up the ball and play in a strike force. It's a, it's a pretty well executed game plan so far. Now victory on the counter once again. Weatherholt to Gilnick. Tegan Allen making a supporting run. Gilnick is looking for Weatherholt instead. Now Allen's involved. Gilnick. Puerta. Savannah back to Colaprico and now forward deflecting it on Princess Sabini awake to the pass crowd shows their appreciation as Sydney play their way out of trouble albeit a little helter skelter and then Casey Dumont sharply off her line Puerta back to Kennedy Sabini chasing Beard Sam Johnson. Eventually engages Ivini. Still able to send the pass sideways to Weatherholt. Tegan Allen back to Dumont. And now that clearance gets victory out of their defensive half temporarily. Nan. Weatherholt. Into space for Gilnick. Danger for Sydney FC. M. Gilnick roaming the right. And the cutback, wrong footed all the victory attackers. Now Sydney trying to slingshot the other way. Colaprico to Devanna. Early ball. Lugazzo. Shouts from her teammates to play the pass. Eventually opts for Colaprico. Back to Legazzo. Now victory defence in position. Kennedy. And a little grab of the arm will give Sydney FC a free kick right on the edge of shooting range. Well, this has been a great tussle to watch. Dow in Kennedy. Kennedy feeling back to a midfield daze. Makes the run, takes it through. It opens up, so she continues to take it. And a late pull of the hand there from Dowie. Good little position here for Sydney FC. But they're kind of running out of options in that final third, Sydney FC. Victory putting just two in the wall. Colaprico, you can see the distance here. Casey Dumont very much expecting this to be crossed towards the pack of players. And Colaprico does indeed send it into the mixer. Alloy able to win the duel against Kennedy. That was an interesting play there from Nan. She just wanted to get it out of the, the danger zone. Probably was a good opportunity for them to keep the ball and actually play out from the midfield. Colaprico. Puerta. Rachel Suter. Need 
return to play it to Caitlin Ford. Another shimmy of the hips, but Alloway knows exactly what's coming. Colaprico to the right side, Huerta, ghosting run, and then that will go down as a shot on target, but easily claimed by Casey Dumont. Wasn't a bad idea, they'd shifted it out from the left and the ball out was great. I think Huerta probably had an opportunity there to bring that down. Put that across the face of goal. Elias, Devanna. After shimmying away from Angie Beard, is trying to hurdle through. Fouled, and we're going to see the first booking of the game as well. And the pincer movement from Mar and Beard ends with Angie Beard getting the first booking. And a polite nod there from uh, Angie Beard too. Yep, I'll take that. Lisa Devanna running at goal at speed. Look at the ball skills here. A little clip there from Beard, acknowledged. Well, yeah, definitely Beard getting the booking. Oh, she's clipped her from behind. Pace. There's no dispute. There was actually a head nod. Yep, I'll take that. Melbourne victory left back will now have to be careful for the remainder of the game. And Colaprico with another free kick. Mid-range. Drifting it to Kennedy at the far post, but can't make ground. Well, you can see the frustration, I guess, creeping into the, the Sydney FC's game at the moment. Everything has been excellent, bar that final service, that final cross, that final free kick in. I don't think it's up to scratch. It's definitely not mirrored the build-up play here. And it is interesting. They'll get plenty of opportunities because they're going still at 62% possession here, Sydney. Melbourne victory limited to counter-attacking and repelling at the moment. Kennedy's headed this time. Gillick happy to let it run out. And then the throw, hoping for Weatherholt, but Kennedy is first to the ball. It's a great clearance, bending down the touchline and finding a teammate in Princess Abini. Took on Nen, didn't work out, ball broke kindly. Abini. Sydney have switched their wingers here with Abini on the left, Devanna now on the right. And you did flag that early in the game, Sarah, but Devanna is often used on the right to cut in. Let's see if she does that here. Loose touch will hold her up. Now against Angie Beard, Devanna. Melina Ayres blocking it away. Ford getting involved. Devanna. Ford. Plenty of movement ahead of the ball, but Ford is dispossessed. Puerta. Polites. You feel like Sydney are just starting to turn up the heat here. Big phase of play for Melbourne victory to hold on to this 1-0 lead. And they do as Sydney go back. Well, they're just struggling. Every time they try to go through the, the central of defence, victory doing so well. Gracie Mars shielding. Kennedy's pass to Abini. Many numbers in the box. Abini trying to pick out one, but Sam Johnson wins the header. And now Huerta will follow in on the right. Elias. Plenty of time to measure across, and Dumont had to go. Legazzo was waiting, but Casey Dumont, firm hands. Rolls it out to Gilnick. Not a great deal of energy in this counter from victory here. Gilnick just biding her time, waiting for Nan to run. Uses her now. And then a burst of acceleration, but Nan trying for Dowie instead. Tobin to Legazzo. Legazzo's got Devanna breaking, and that's a great little step over to out Fox Beard, and now Devanna into the action. Ford. I need help, I need help. Victory on the last line of defence here, packing the penalty area. Devanna's cross, and cut back to Legazzo. Sydney get their equaliser, and it had been coming. Colaprico's cut back. Chloe Legazzo makes it 1-1. One, one. Well, this, one, one, this one's going to make the hype real. The patience in the build-up here, having Lisa Devana on the right, wasn't really going to result in a cross across the face of the goal. You can see here, Lisa Devana wants to get it on her back, off back on her left foot, which engages Caitlin Ford, and it starts here, and they move the defence around. You can see 
back end. Great ball in here from Lisa Devana. Doesn't make Chloe Legazzo. But Chloe Legazzo is there for the scraps. And Colaprico, what a job she does far post. Keeping it in and cutting it back right onto the foot of Chloe Legazzo. Something like 15 touches before this one went in. It was good to watch. Great shot here behind the net. Legazzo able to get it past the desperate Danny Weatherholt who was sliding towards the camera. And in the aftermath of the goal, Melbourne victory have made a substitution. Five minutes out from half time. Melinda Ayres is off and Melinda J. Barbieri has come on. So Ayres was playing down the left wing. Right now it looks like Barbieri may have just tucked in a little bit. See her pursuing Polias here. Energy into the game. Well, that's a, that's a really interesting uh, switch here. I, I, the only thing that I can imagine is that Ayres wasn't doing the defensive duties Jeff Hopkins was after because I thought she was dangerous in attack. Barbieri, who started in the absence of Grace Maher in the Melbourne Derby last week and played an excellent game. It was only subbed off in the 92nd minute, so effectively a full game for her. And maybe you're right, Sarah, that in a defensive sense, they need a bit more presence here. They've been outpassed, and now that the game is level, Victory, perhaps their first priority is to take this parity to the break. Well, there's been too many times where Werta and uh, Princess have been to be able to pick up the ball and, and combine down the right here. We just got to see Lisa Devana do it earlier. And I'd have to look at the replay again, but I, I don't rem don't recall seeing Ayres uh, track back and pick up Lisa Devana, which is her job. Devana. Puerta. Can Sydney make it two goals in the blink of an eye? Caitlin Ford. Oh, genius! No, it won't count. What a spoil sport. Sofia Huerta had nearly scored a Zlatanish. Absolute freakish goal, but not to be. Well, she started in an offside position here. Yeah, good call here from the assistant referee, but oh, absolutely stunning touch there. Let's see that again. Caitlin Ford again lining Laura Alloway up. The right back was nowhere to be seen. And everyone was beaten by this beautiful touch here from Huerta. What's Huerta even oh. doing there, playing right back? As Dumont is called into the action here, perhaps relieved that victory are still level 1-1. Huerta, we know what she's capable of. It would have been her first goal in Sydney Colours. And now Devanna chasing down to the corner. Sydney have got the feeling here. But they can take the lead before half time. Devanna, Angie Beard did well. Johnson finds the safety of the touchline and will check in with Glenn Lauder at pitch level. Yeah, interesting to see that early substitution, Teo. Uh, obviously, Molina Ayres has had a great start of the season, but uh, struggling to contain Sophia Huerta, who's been among Sydney FC's best today. So, uh, an early afternoon for her, not uh, an injury, just tactical. Thank you, Glenn. Well, we saw it on Thursday night as well with Vicky Flannery leaving the game. And Jeff Hopkins not waiting until the break here to shuffle the pack. Yeah, well, that's that's clearly the reason. But uh, there's a there's probably an equal shout for uh, Tegan Allen on the right hand side. It's uh, Sydney FC just really been able to use their width this first half. Devanna, Beard, a long clearance. This might just be the circuit breaker that Victory need. Natasha Dowie. Taking on all the attacking responsibility here, Dowie. Trying to do it all herself. Dowie, it's going to sit up. Not quite. Bledsoe with a little bobble, just allowing her in. And that would have been the ultimate goal against the run of play. Well, they've been trying to really avoid that matchup. Tobin up against Natasha Dowie. It's the one time they haven't been able to do it. Again, Delfina Domoski's flag is up, and all credit to the assistant referee, whether it's up near the halfway line or right down in the teeth of goal. Getting the call spot on. One minute of regulation until half time, and this big blue is delivering so far. Such an intriguing game. Tactical battle. Players with little duels inside the match. Now, Allen going to ground penalty. 
and Victory will get the chance to score against the run of play. Princess Avini can't believe it, but Tegan Allen has won a spot kick. Well, the look on Princess Beanie's face, this all happened very quickly for her. Balling was great. Good little flick here again from Emily, Emily Gilnick. And they're calling for a push in the back. You gotta wonder, has Allen's gone down quite easily unless there was a clip in the back. However, it's I think it's it's gotta be the right call. Penalty kick for Natasha Dowie. Bledsoe making herself big. Victory to take the lead, unthinkably, given the way this first half has gone. It's Dowie. And even though it got a fairly solid touch from the keeper, it is in the back of the net. Dowie's got a double, and Melbourne Victory have struck in first half stoppage time. Well, that one was against the run of play, no doubt. Princess Abini is probably the last player, one of the last players you want defending on the edge of your box. She's just come in a little bit overzealous, and a defender would know you kind of hold your ground there. And Natasha Dowie doesn't miss from there. Cool and composed from the captain. Bledsoe went the right way, and you heard the flick of the mitt, but it wasn't enough. And now, even though it was one minute of additional time signalled, it's just about expired, and with the penalty kick being taken, we will tick into a little bit of bonus. Natasha Dowie, a goal in open play and a penalty now. And Melbourne Victory once again with something to hold on to in this contest. In a game where all the momentum was flowing Sydney FC's way and they looked likely to take the lead before halftime. Big halftime team talk coming up for Ante Juric. I'm sure it will be in order of more of the same. There will be that much more urgency. I wonder what Jeff Hopkins might be able to do now that his team is in front. Mars header finds the line. And that is half time. The Big Blue is throwing up a potential classic here in the W League. Jubilee Oval has seen one between these two teams before. And Natasha Dowie's double sends Melbourne Victory into the rooms with the lead. Half time. Sydney FC 1, Melbourne Victory 2. And let's go down to pitch level with Glenn Lauder. Yeah, Teo, thanks very much. Alana Kennedy, it's been a great battle uh, between you and Natasha Dowie. Um, a great effort from your team in the first half, but unbelievably, you're going into the break 2-1. Down, is that deserved? Um, yeah, well, I think we need to keep it tight at the back. Um, obviously, Tash is a great um, striker, so if you give her chances, um, you know, she's going to execute and score. So um, we'll just be looking to keep tight on her for the, the second half. But I think on the ball, we're doing really well. All right, good luck in the second half. Thank you. Alana Kennedy there. Yeah, unbelievably, Melbourne victory with a 2-1 lead despite Sydney FC's domination. We'll be back on the other side of this break with all the first half highlights with Adam Peacock and Sarah Walsh. G'day girls, uh, Brian Fletcher here. Congratulations on becoming world champions. Hello girls, Bozza here. I just want to say congratulations. The entire country was behind you. I'm envious, I'm jealous, but most of all, I'm so proud of you girls. What an amazing effort. We are oh so proud. Congratulations. No doubt you find a puppy yourself just to celebrate. What's been a real difficult time for cricket, you guys have been an absolute shining light, so congratulations and well done. Days, 30 deals. Only on the My Macca's app. Like a small Big Mac meal and cheeseburger for only $5 or a quarter pounder for only $2. Download it now and check today's exclusive deal. Harvey Norman, even more amazing deals on home entertainment. Up to 20% off selected TVs and sound bars. Plus 60 months interest free. Score a knockout deal on big screen TVs. This Sony 65 inch 4K Android TV down to 1495. Plus hot hot prices across sound bars. This 2.1 channel Samsung soundbar, 195 bucks. Doorbuster deals, massive range, big brands. Up to 20% off selected TVs and sound bars. Ends Monday at Harvey Norman. Sit no. What about Run to Paradise? Han, now you're talking. It's back! 
the famous Coles finest luxury gingerbread and butterscotch sponge pudding. Now just $9 each. And this week, all Coles finest puddings are 25% off. I want to lick the plate. Good things are happening at Coles. In tomorrow's game, there'll be another golden generation. You'll be told which club to support by your grandparents. The world will watch us. I'll have his job. And we'll be world champions. At NAB, we're proud to support football in Australia. NAB, more than money. Ducky, the game's over here. Get a great energy deal at alinterenergy.com.au. Where's my phone? Okay, what do you call someone who just got a gorgeous nine-piece outdoor setting for only nineteen ninety-nine? <laughs> the McBride. <laughs> 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 I got it at A Mart. Sit no. What about Run to Paradise? Han, now you're talking. Ready? Bye! Got loose change? You'll love our loose change menu. Dive into Macca's today for a frozen Coke for just $1. Well, that is a fair advertisement for... Women's football in uh, Rebel Female Football Week. Uh, open, expansive chances, brilliant football in patches from both Melbourne Victory and Sydney FC. The big gun for Melbourne Victory, scoring two goals. And Matilda scoring for Sydney FC on a beautiful Sunday afternoon here at Congress Jubilee Stadium. It is Melbourne Victory 2, Sydney FC 1 at halftime of the Big Blue. Welcome back, Adam Peacock alongside Sarah Walsh. You haven't been able to catch a breast, but I have been in the, the break because you had to run down here after commentating, but that's a, that was a fabulous 45 minutes. Oh, great game and two very different styles. And I think Victory have defended so well uh, to be able to see themselves in the lead. Uh, obviously, it was a, the goal was, uh, the penalty was against the run of play, but they've really been so solid in defence. Um, Sydney FC are finding it really hard to break them down. Let's have a look at the, uh, the stats from that first half. And Sydney FC did have a uh, stack of chances. You have a look at it 21 times into the area. Just the two shots on target, but nine in total. So they've got to tighten up that. But as you can see, Sydney FC, a lot of the ball at feet. Double the amount of uh, completed passes, at least, of Melbourne victory. But it was victory who took the lead. Tash Dow, this is a brilliant. I love goals like this. It was uh, it was superb. Look where she's placed here. She plays off the uh, the shoulder of Nat Tobin. She's definitely not playing off the shoulder of Alana Kennedy, but she makes that run. Nan's always looking for the little dink in behind. But you've got to finish this, and that is some stunning strike there from Dowie. It was some some thought, Bledsoe. Why didn't she dive? It wouldn't matter if she had to go nah. go gadget arms out. She wouldn't have touched. Absolutely it. not. This was hit with some serious venom, and uh, look, that's what Tash Dowie does. She only needs a couple of chances in front of goal, and she takes them. Sydney's goal. It eventually got in the back of the net. We thought, yeah. oh, will it? Will it? Will it? It, it did in the end. Chloe Legato on the end of it. Look, they found it really difficult to go through the middle, and and you can see this has been the strategy for victory. They've done such a great job at keeping it really tight in the central of defence, and this requires. Sydney FC to do something quite different. You can see Princess Abina drops back 
back in deep, which allows Colaprico to make that run in behind. And again, Lisa Devon is never going to go to the byline. So everyone got a touch on this goal. That's what I liked about it. Yeah. Because nothing else was working against Victory. They've been able to, uh, it's almost like they wanted uh, Sydney FC, fine, have it out wide. We'll deal with any, any kind of service that comes in. This is the one time they've been able to break open and pull players out. And that's why they scored. Can rip your heart out sometimes. Football can make you feel great out of nowhere. Can rip your heart out of nowhere. And Sydney FC would have been pretty feeling pretty good about themselves after the half that they produced, and then getting back parity. And then that happens on the eve of half time. Look, I don't think they've been solid in defence, Sydney FC. So I'm not surprised that uh, Victory have been able to really rattle them. And Princess Sabini, as I said in the broadcast, is probably one of the last players you want tracking. Uh, tracking your player here. Look, they're comfortable with it inside the box? I am comfortable with it. She's pushed her in the back. Did Tegan Allen go down easy? Yes, she did. But I, I'm happy with the penalty. And Tash Dowie, well, she hits it. Bleslow picks the spot. Um, but again, they deserve the lead. Yeah. Sydney FC haven't been able to... Uh, the service into the box hasn't been great. Uh, and it's going to require something different, uh, much like the goal that they actually did score in the first half. Well, Victory, who's that responsibility? so well. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they've set up a plan and, and it's working to a T. What about... Sydney, how they get more out of what they've got in terms of the individuals. Who needs to step up a little bit? Yeah, I think there's a lot of pressure for a team that knows they're going to have a little bit more possession uh, on the ball, but I think it's just a bit more finesse and, and composure in that final third. As I talked about, that final pass. Lisa Nirvana, they need to get her one-on-one -on -one with... Uh, with Tegan Allen as much as they can. I wouldn't have Lisa Devana on the right-hand side. Keep her out there and make sure you get runners into the box. Princess Abini and Werther have been outstanding on the right. Yeah. I'm not surprised that... Uh you know, I'm surprised that he, he hooked Ayres, but uh, look, they've just been running right. Look at, look at the defence here from Ayres, just dropped in an extra player. Um, Sydney FC, they're going to create chances. Are they going to be polished enough in the final third this second half? That's the question. You would imagine that at some point it's going to click for them if they keep on doing what they're doing, given the, the talent that just in that final third alone. Yeah, you would think so, right? And, and I think uh, with victory, I think they knew they were going to go in with less possession. There's been a couple of times that showed me that. Nan had an opportunity to play out from the back, and she kicked it out to no one, and they, they yeah. don't want to keep the ball. They want to drop back in, keep their shape, um, and, and they're frustrating Sydney FC. And look, that's that's not far off being a goal, but uh, are they going to create chances, Sydney FC, this second half? Absolutely. Are they going to be polished enough? Will Victory be able to uh, defend these opportunities? And, and up the other end, Victory, they can yeah. score more goals. Exactly. Thanks for that, Walshy. We're off to a short break. Yeah, so so many uh, questions to be answered in the second half in the sunshine here at Cogra. We're back in a moment on a big double header, big blue on Fox Sports and SBS watching the W League as well around the country. We're back in a moment with the second half. Can the Aussies wrap up the series with a win in the decider? Oh, does it get any bigger? Live with no ad breaks during play. Oh, every ball of every T20 international on Fox Cricket. Harvey Norman, even more amazing deals on technology with 60 months interest free. 20% off laptops, 2-in-1s, desktops and all-in-1s. 15% off Surface Pro, book and laptop. Nokia 5.1 with Android One, hot price $247. JBL Flip 4 portable waterproof speaker, a low $99. Samsung Gear S3 Frontier Smartwatch, amazing price $299. More amazing deals and super savings now at Harvey Norman. Be quick before they're gone. My body needs to be in top condition. I need to stay focused to power through the pain, not only for me, but for my team as well. Bob Jane Team Arts is part of my team. They always look after me. When you sweat, you lose more than water. G-Active is the electrolyte water that replaces what you lose in exercise and has no sugar. G-Active, water made active. You're early.
In tomorrow's game, there'll be another golden generation. You'll be told which club to support by your grandparents. The world will watch us. I'll have his job. And we'll be world champions. At NAB, we're proud to support football in Australia. NAB, more than money. Harvey Norman, even more amazing deals on home entertainment. Up to 20% off selected TVs and sound bars. Plus 60 months interest free. Score a knockout deal on big screen TVs. This Sony 65 inch 4K Android TV down to 1495. Plus hot hot prices across sound bars. This 2.1 channel Samsung soundbar, 195 bucks. Doorbuster deals, massive range, big brands. Up to 20% off selected TVs and sound bars. Ends Monday at Harvey Norman. Monday night hour of power, Fox Sports. There's Melbourne victory. Natasha Dowie with her two first half goals have the visitors in the lead here at Coggera. After a great first half, one dominated in possession by Sydney FC, but it's Melbourne victory ahead on the scoreboard. And as the sun beats down here on Jubilee Oval, you do wonder who's going to have more in the legs as this game goes on. As the huddle breaks up for Melbourne victory, there's Sydney FC's goal scorer, Chloe Legazzo. We'll be hoping to add to that tally as Sydney try to find a way back into the game. Of course, the buy means that this is only their third match of the season today, and if they were to lose, it would leave them looking up the league a bit as we get ready to kick off the second half. And a false start. Lisa Devan is going to have to backtrack, and then the game kicks off, so a little bit of disorganisation. Rachel Mitchinson calling everyone back into starting position once again. No such problems this time. And a big second half in prospects. 45 more like the first half, and who knows which way this game will go. Sarah Walsh will uh, learn a lot about these two teams in the next 45 minutes. We will, and it was probably really good timing for victory. We were under the pump for a lot of that uh, back half of that second half. They obviously got the goal. Uh, against the run of play, but uh, I think they would have welcomed that half time. Sydney FC were picking up some momentum. And Sydney, with that goal, have now scored in 17 consecutive matches against Melbourne Victory. It is the longest streak of one team scoring against another in the W League. Comes as no surprise. Rachel Suter's throw. Legazzo, Devanna in space. Under the head of Princess Abini. And attacking through the right side, Huerta made her presence felt, but not able to win it with feet. A throw it instead. Ibini will have something to prove after giving away that penalty late in the first half. Huerta's cross is intercepted here. Barbieri, the first half sub, came on for Molina Ayres. And that pass goes out. Melbourne Victory still have Annabelle Martin and Kyra Cooney Cross available as their outfield options. Sydney FC yet to make a change. Savannah McCaskill, one of their American imports. And then youngsters Angela Christodoulou, a defender, and Taylor Ray, a midfielder. Possible inclusions in the game. There is Ante Juric, Sydney FC coach. And the second half, very much starting the way the first half finished, and that is with Sydney springing passes together and controlling the tempo of the game. Well, again, you can see they're quite comfortable without the ball. Forward in space. Can she run it down? She does, but only to the advantage of Sam Johnson. 
who's just dawdled here a little bit, and Princess Sabini forces a giveaway. Ford. Can't beat Angie Beard this time. Beard clears the lines. Colaprico. Quetta. Polites. Sydney being forced back to Kennedy. Sophia Quetta once again. Ibini has the central space to turn into here. Didn't fancy a shot though. Victory standing off, and in the end, Ibini's pass was intercepted. And now Grace Ma knocks over Teresa Polias. And once again, it's a free kick right on the limit of the shooting range of a couple of these Sydney dead ball specialists. It is so congested. The central defence or the centre of the park. Every single midfielder here for Victory were behind the ball. So it's a really good result for Sydney FC and Teresa Polias, who really had nowhere to go. Kennedy is a known super boot from distance. Danny Colaprico scored one of the goals of the season last year from a free kick for Adelaide United. It's going to keep Casey Dumont guessing. Four in the wall. Is this Sydney's avenue back to parity? It is Colaprico, and she can't dip it harmlessly over the bar in the end. I'm actually a little bit surprised that Colaprico took that one. Lana Kennedy loves those top left. Maybe it was a little bit too central for her. She loves to take it. It's wider outside. But again, that one well off. Victory won't mind. First five minutes of the second half, very much Sydney FC's way. Barbieri, Nan, Sydney leading the chase back to the ball. Natasha Dowie is on a hat-trick. Has one in the W League already, away to Brisbane a couple of seasons ago. Puerto. wins the duel with Colaprico. Laura Alloway. Now Gilnick. And Gilnick veering into the traffic. It finds its way to Natasha Dowie. Hat-trick hero. The unstoppable, irrepressible Natasha Dowie has done it again. Well, this was, this was an exceptional play here from Victory. Just watch the combination and link between Natasha Dowie and Emily Gilnick. Emily Gilnick rolls in and takes this on a left hand, a left hand side. You thought she was going to pull the trigger here, but she doesn't. And she just draws in Weta, opens up that hole. Lana Kennedy, again, Tash Dowie. It is so important that she uses her body here. She rolls off Alana Kennedy and the little dink in behind here was absolutely gorgeous here from uh, Emily Gilnick. And again, she sets herself up for a right foot, which opens up the keeper. You know the keeper's going to be dragged and then slots at far post. It is a well-executed goal here. Paging Phil Neville, England World Cup squad. Surely, surely Natasha Dowie is getting a recall at some stage before France in the middle of next year. We know he's watching the W League. Chioma Ubogagu got called up from the Brisbane Raw for her first cap in the last international break. And Dowie now up to 19 W League goals. But very much... A dominant player today and this season will make it four and four. Well, she made it look very easy and she's up against, you know, the, one of the best centre backs in Australia. But her first touch set her up to roll onto a right foot and it's so important. She gives herself the best possible chance to hit that first time. She's just an out and out, out and out a goal scorer and they're hard to come by. Puerta. 
Over the head of Legazzo, Tegan Allen waiting, bracing for contact from Devanna and then rolled away, finds the safety of the touchline. Let's check in with Glenn Lauder. Yeah, spoke to both coaches at half-time, Teo. Uh, Ante Juric uh, obviously wanted his team to finish chances, but uh, he also thought his defenders were getting a little bit square, and uh, I don't know whether they could have done too much after that beautiful ball through uh, for the goal from Emily Gilnick. Uh, as for Jeff Hopkins, uh, as you can imagine, pretty happy with the way things are going, particularly on the scoreboard, but uh, just a bit concerned that his side was defending a little bit too deep in the second in the first half. So he wants them to go forward a little bit more and they've certainly shown that so far. They have and you wouldn't back against Melbourne Victory continuing to pick Sydney off on the break or just picking their moments to surge. Well, the thing that's changed with this Victory squad, uh, Tash Dowry has been there for how many years now, but she's always been isolated. And she, she's been isolated uh, for much of this game, but when it matters... She's been able to link up with Emily, obviously Emily Gilnick, sorry, who's been tucking in quite, quite central to pick up the ball. Gilnick's tenacity gets it to where the Holt Dowie was nearly off and running once again. Important block. And now Legazzo hurt by that challenge. Christine Nairn goes in to apologise and pull her adversary back up. And if you know you're not going to have too many chances in front of goal, Natasha Dowie is probably the striker that you want on the pitch because she makes the most of the chances. And even though as we see Beard win this header, stay with Legazzo. Sweeping cross. Alloway. Teresa Polias. Vickery pack the middle once again. Rachel Suter's ball. And even though Legazzo got there first. It just sat up kindly for Dumont. Well, again, I'm just, I'm not sure that's the ball in there for Chloe Legazza, just because she makes the run. The ball doesn't have to be played. She's up against, like said, Casey Dumont. And the balls into the box for me just seem a little bit hopeful. And that's what scoreboard pressure does to a team. They've dominated in possession, but they just not, they haven't been able to make a count when it matters in that final third. See there, Sydney more than double the number of balls into the penalty area. But it's Melbourne Victory's entries that have found the back of the net. Can't forget that when the game was 1-0, Dowie also drew a great save out of Aubrey Bledsoe as well. So she has been such a menace to this Sydney FC team today. Tobin. Elias. Colaprico. Kennedy. Ford. Trying to roll off Angie Beard, but Beard's recovery a good one. Gets goal side, and now Nan comes in to help and win the foul, and that's good team defence from Melbourne Victory. Well, it was excellent defence. They get so many numbers around the ball. You've got to see in that play... Emily Gilnick was right in front of Tegan Allen. Every single player drops well behind the ball. It is so congested. So Chloe Legazzo is getting frustrated and coming looking for the ball deeper. Just haven't been able to break through those lines with passing. We got to see it just quickly there. Caitlin Ford turned and ran. How many times have we seen that to break open play when your passing isn't working? And that's what it's going to take for this Sydney FC team. Olaprico able to muscle Weatherholt and now Legazzo, Polias. Sydney a little bit hurried here. Melbourne Victory trying to win it back in that midfield third, but then Suter's pass has put Kennedy into space. Huerta making a run. Kennedy making her work too much. We did see in Sydney's loss to Melbourne City, they did move Sofia Huerta up the pitch, more into a number 10 role late in the game. You wonder at some point or another whether Ante Juric might break that glass in case of emergency. Right now, Huerta remains on the right flank and is involved in this build-up here. As the shot goes across the face and Devanna can't get a late touch. Well, they're knocking on the door, aren't they? They're asking questions. They dropped here really quickly. You can see the space that Chloe Legazzo had. She's scuffed that one wide. Can't underestimate the, the job that Nan has done on Chloe Legazzo today. She's 
stayed tight. Devanna. Ford. Laid back to Legazzo. Devanna. Nairn standing off. Flags up. Offside against Caitlin Ford. Well, she was called offside there, and Laura Alloway had a hand up, but I think this one was quite tight. Don't have a great angle from the comms box. Maybe the call was for before that play, she'd come from an offside position. The paperwork's in. Oh, well, that's an easy one, isn't it? Paperwork's in and Savannah McCaskill is going to be subbed in. Sydney's first change next break and play. I suspect it might be for Princess Sabini, but we'll have to wait and see. Suter just took a little knock to the neck there, but she's a little sore, is able to keep her feet. Crunching from Tegan Allen. And a foul on Lisa Devan. And that will allow the change to take place. The woman from South Carolina, Savannah McCaskill, is coming on. And it is Princess Abini that makes way. Well, there's absolutely no doubt that she will have a point to prove here. She was subbed in uh, for Princess Abini. It was a tactical change. And I've got to say, I was actually a little bit shocked by it because uh, what, we got, what we did get to see from McCaskill Early days with something very special, linking up with Caitlin Ford. And it could be a super sub right here, trying to propel herself into the action, cleared away. McCaskill's NWSL club, of course, Sky Blue, but was a South Carolina Gamecock in college. Tobin. Weatherholt, block tackle. Colaprico. And now Ford. Onside this time, but has to backtrack to retrieve possession. Legazzo. And then hooks the shot. Great chance for Sydney. Well, this was some ball here from Colaprico. She was off balance and she hit it sweetly. Made it over the defence. Caitlin Ford didn't want to take it first time to goal. Or Alloway had covered the defence. Oh, Legazzo probably should have done better there. At least to force a save from Casey Dumont. Chances have been falling Legazzo's way. He does have Sydney's goal, but could have had so many more. And Sydney again continue to knock on the door. Alloway this time. Held her ground. Oh, that's another huge win there for Laura Alloway. She read that well, got in position early. As the ball goes clattering into the microphone there. And Melbourne Victory will take their time moving the chess pieces up the board here. Third goal early in the second half, giving them a real buffer. Only an hour gone. And on a hot day, you do wonder... Sydney FC are going to be able to keep this frenetic pace up or maybe fall vulnerable to victory picking them off again. Emily Gilnick trying to do exactly that. And the ball ran out. That's one of the rare occasions we've seen Emily Gilnick with time to be able to line up her left back, which is Rachel, Rachel Suter. It's time the ball there. That is Delfina Demoski, the assistant referee, over on this near side. Weatherholt, solid header. Suter. Legazzo. Weatherholt again. Suter, back to Bledsoe. Space for McCaskill, plays the early ball. Caitlin Ford. And Beard, who's really set herself for the challenge of marking Caitlin Ford, has 
able to neutralize the contest and concede the corner. Colaprico, so much set piece work in that first half. Free kicks have steadily got further and further away, so let's see if a corner can provide a different result. Kennedy, well, that's the target at any given corner, but couldn't keep the header down. Well, Colaprico's service there was excellent. She was able to play it into the space where she wanted Alana Kennedy to run into. And it wasn't far off in the end, got a good connection. Probably just a bit too far out. You see there Casey Dumont with Teresa Polias just trying to stand in her way, restrict her movement, but ultimately the header not forcing the goalkeeper into action. Grace Bar. And Dowie. Back heel couldn't quite find where the holds. Away against Ford. Well, again, there's a bit of a psychological battle going on here with Alloway and Ford. Alloway getting the better of Ford again. <laughs> Allen picks up possession there. Victory already off to their best start to a W League season. They... Allen is going to be chased down here by Devanna. Victory defence get back behind the ball, and Allen is able to take the sting out of that cross. It's cleared away. Weatherholt, Dowie, what a first touch. Stop the ball going out, and now can break and try to attack. Barbieri, herring after it, but can't quite get there before the line. Victory had never been unbeaten in their first two games to start a W League season. The Derby was number three. This would make it number four. If, of course, we can hold on to this result from here. Sydney FC are going to keep asking questions. Probably feels like they're still a long way from home. As this sweeping ball is going to keep tumbling on and run away from Lisa Devanna. If you're Ante Juric, Sarah, are you happy enough with how the game has gone since the McCaskill sub? Are you thinking about any other positional changes or is it more a matter of patience that the weight of chances they're creating will eventually pay off? Well, probably at some point we'll see uh, where to have the freedom to be able to play in the midfield and not track back, maybe possibly a three at the back. I think they want to go down 3-1 here. Obviously, they want to score goals, but they might have to take some risks now. I think they've been able to create the chances. We've seen plenty of times they've had a couple shots on goal. They've been able to use their width, get some crosses in. Can you imagine if they do get one back, this is a very different, different game we're talking about. There's still plenty of time. Victory, victory don't want to lose concentration right now as well. Victory already came into the match, top of the league on goals scored from Adelaide, but obviously on the live table they'd be breaking three points clear. Got multi ball at the moment, so. I think other teams watching this today uh, have been shown how victory can be completely disciplined in defence. As I said, there's rare rare occasion where you find that they don't have 10 players behind the ball and that's hard for any team to break down. There's also been no space in behind for their quick players for a quick outlet. Puerta. McCaskill. Sofia Huerta again. Barbieri is right there with her. McCaskill. Polias. Bit of space in midfield to work, but wants to go sideways over to Rachel Souter. And then a telegraphed pass. Alloway takes it away. Dowie's ahead of the ball. Alloway is going to send it out to Emily Gilnick. Only Dowie to aim for in the penalty area. 
Gilnick is sending it to the byline and ultimately over the byline. Well, I'd actually think about taking uh, Rachel Suter off at the moment. I think she's been through miles of running and she's struggling to, to apply any meaningful pressure on the ball here. Look, you see Gilnick could have took that ball in. I don't think Suter would have been able to apply the pressure that was needed. I'd have a think about that. Here is Suter. And this pass is going to give Devanna a course to go and chase. But Tegan Allen, good technique on the volley. That's for handball, notch heated by the referee, and so Legazzo can take it and run. Devanna in space. And the flag is up against Caitlin Ford. Second time in this half she's been caught offside. Well, again, that's better play there, and that started with Chloe Legazzo. She drew Weatherholt and Nan out of the midfield, which allowed that space that the strikers haven't been able to find. And this was the call for the handball. Yep. They were right. I thought it initially hit a chest, too. But again, it was great work from Chloe Legazzo to pull those, draw those players out. Tight call, but assistant refs have been pretty good in this one. Dowie breaking the other way. Over the, the heads of all in the penalty area. Barbieri making a diagonal run in. It's Dowie trying to turn provider on that occasion. front of Weatherholt, but Dan cools things down. And now playing Mindy Barbieri through the left side. Barbieri leaves it for Nan. Just a hustle just to keep it in. And now back to Barbieri. Quetta went to ground, got the ball. McCaskill down the line, Sam Johnson heads it away. Free kick will come to Sydney's aid here. Keen to take it quickly. Caitlin Ford, Devanna in an acre of space on the left. And here comes the pass. Lisa Devanna sends it to Colaprico. Ford. Sydney slowing down. McCaskill trying to speed him back up. Not quite. Angie Beard. Drives it out. Forwards flick through the penalty area and then out. Suter getting up for Sydney's cause. Back to Kennedy. Outside of the foot pass. Nearly came off. Alloway. Now Jules Legazzo, but then picked off. Colaprico. And now feeding through Devanna. Dumont down to hold the ball. It may not have been on target, but needed to grip on. Well, there it was, something different again from Sydney FC's attack. Colaprico turning defence into attack. She wasn't picked up in the midfield. Lisa Devanna hitting that first time. Dowie. Barbieri. Suta guarding Nan. There's not a, lot of, not a lot of energy in the, in the body, body language for the Sydney FC's team. They do look a little bit dejected. They've pretty much show, thrown the kitchen sink at victory and they've dealt with it. I've got to call one of the defenders out. Laura Alloway has been outstanding today. And she's organised this defence and, and mostly around their positional play, how high their line is, that back four. That's obviously where your midfield sets up after that. Legazzo to Devanna. Pass Grace Ma. McCaskill trying to thread the eye of a needle. Victory defence staying in position. Sophia Huerta. McCaskill surrounded by Navy shirts. Has to go back. Huerta's pass finds Ford this time. Giving the space to turn and shoot. Sam Johnson with a big block. 
Devanna. Puerta. A raking cross. And over the heads of all. Colaprico chasing it out the back. Suter. And Alloway first to react. Dowie not giving up on this ball by a long shot and then frustrated as it just runs away from her at the last. Well, he would be frust frustrated because they've still maintained possession, but uh, it's obviously not reflected on the scoreboard. And as this game goes on, Victor is sitting deeper and deeper. Oh, oh way, another curving clearance, but Kennedy is underneath it. Legazzo. Polites. Puerta. And now McCaskill trying to get on the move. Angie Beard holding her up. McCaskill. A few little ducks and weaves, but can't find a way past. Still gets it to Devanna. Devanna from the edge of the box, and Dumont flying to hold on to another save. Well, again, it's probably not a shot that's going to worry Casey Dumont. At least Nirvana on a left foot on the edge of, edge of the box is dangerous at the best of times. They've just been able to hold Sydney FC out to a, at arm's length. Aaron pass from Huerta. Gives it to Weatherholt. Ma. Mars pass, aimless. Or Ronald down to Aubrey Bledsoe. He's been a bit of a spectator in the last 10 minutes or so. Sydney FC, nothing to show for their efforts here in the second half, though. Ma once again. Weatherholt. Alloway. Quetta. Sam Johnson, Nan, trying to thread the pass for Dowie. It's a good run from Natasha Dowie. Sydney defence on alert. Gilnick. Dowie, back to Grace Ma. Now it's Sydney's turn to be pinned back. Nan. Feigning to use her right foot. Puerta not buying it. Now Nan will use that right side. Cleared by Kennedy. McCaskill. Puerta. And a drive out into open field. Devanna leads Tegan Allen to the ball, but that was a solid challenge coming in from Allen just to force Devanna back. Well, look at the passes attempted there. Differential. Sydney FC have just had so much more of the ball. I think victory, uh, if anything's to, to be learned, look at that pass is completed. 318 against 133. Victory are really showing today that they're a team that can absorb pressure and do it comfortably. And equally, they're a, they're a team that can hurt you on the counter. And there's that, that sub we talked about here, Teo Suda. She, uh, she looked tired. She had a really good first half, but struggled this second half. Suda leaves the game, and 17-year-old Angelique Christodoulou comes on. Made her debut against Melbourne Victory in her one season at Western Sydney Wanderers. See Grace Ma here, who did come into this game with an injury concern. Her right foot was not a moon boot this time last week. And as the shin guards come out, it's a not-so-subtle suggestion that her afternoon is over. So both teams will take the opportunity to make a sub. It will be a first appearance of the season for Kyra Cooney Cross, who missed victory's opening game on international duty with the young Matildas and has been laying in wait to get an opportunity as the team has been off to a good start. Not a bad situation for a team to be in when you've got a competitive situation just to make the bench. That's a good good hit out there for uh, Gracie Ma as well. Getting some minutes under her belt. She hasn't had uh, too much freedom to be able to be creative with the ball today, but she did a good job at shielding that defensive line, not allowing Chloe Legazzo to pick up the ball. 
or Colaprico in really dangerous positions. A long pass here from Beard is going to allow Cooney Cross just to stretch the legs coming off the bench. And the tactical change for victory is that Melinda J. Barbieri has gone into central midfield with Cooney Cross very much out on that left side of the front three. Krista Dulu, first involvement. Now Lugazzo. Still time for Sydney if they're good enough, but they need to find a finishing touch at the end of all this possession. McCaskill. Quetta. Polaris. Colaprico. Polaris has McCaskill in space. Early ball. Quetta has made the run. Sydney with numbers in the box. And that's a great tackle from Sam Johnson, who then wins a foul. And that's just comprehensive defending from the victory centre back. Well, we haven't seen that too many times. The second half, Wirtz are getting out down the right hand side to get a cross in. But everything's usually been dealt with. There are the shots of Melbourne Victory getting off the team bus here for the Big Blue. The crowd is absolutely building in anticipation. Keske Honda, the superstar. We'll have Sydney-based fans excited about seeing him coming up soon. And right now it's the visiting team that are looking to strike the first blow of the afternoon. Mr. Dulu spent the winter playing in the New South Wales NTC. Just there, just there, hold. Barbieri, kicking it on. Tobin has to get some meat on that header and eventually just an umph oof, behind it to get back to Bledsoe. Dowie wouldn't mind a fourth. It is a rarity to score four in a W League game. Tara Andrews has done it for the Newcastle Jets. Downey would love to add her name to that list. And with 10 minutes to go, as Sydney starts to take a few more risks, she'll be there waiting to try and capitalise and put this one to bed. Bit of cat and mouse with Casey Dumont. She could see the funny side. Caitlin Ford not enjoying it quite as much. Legazzo, Allen. Now Kennedy. Alloway ushering at the byline and seeing it out for a goal kick, albeit with a bit of a physical price to pay. She's been so good at getting position early. Caitlin Ford is so used to getting in behind a lot easier than she has today. Uses the body well there, Alloway. Dumont now definitely starting to take her time over every restart of play. This one a goal kick, falling advantageously for Gilnick. Jeff Hopkins very much with an earshot of Tegan Allen. See Laura Alloway coming over to just grab a water bottle as well. Impromptu break, if anything. Victory give possession away. Have to switch back on. Colaprico trying to capitalise. McCaskill sneaking. Can she get to the ball? She can and she's legged. And it is a free kick right at the edge of the penalty area. Well, this is, this is interesting. This is the second yellow for Beard. That is a red card. Melbourne Victory are going to finish this game down one. And the task becomes that much tougher as Angie Beard, who has, other than that red card, had a pretty good game. She's received her marching orders. Well, this one for me at the naked eye was uh, less obvious than the first one in the first half. There's no doubt she has clipped McCaskill. McCaskill works hard here. You can see she was out of the play and she made sure she tried to win this ball here. But it's from behind and, and no ball in sight for Beard. She's collected McCaskill. Yeah, well. It's all off the back of hard work from McCaskill. They've needed... 
someone to make that effort, make that run. And this makes things very interesting now, down a player victory. Two games in a row that McCaskill has drawn a red card from the opponent. That one a second yellow. Against Melbourne City, it was Chelsea Blissett getting a straight red. And Sydney FC's free kicks haven't always quite been within range. Have they found their radar here? It's Alana Kennedy. And it's a pinpoint strike! Game on and Jubilee! Alana Kennedy marks her return to the W League with a brilliant goal. Well, uh, I think I've seen that countless times from Alana Kennedy, and mostly at training, actually. That is her bread and butter top left corner. A little bit wider. This is wider from the earlier one in the first half, and she struck it sweetly. And she's put a team back in this match, but look at that. Look at the bend that it had on it. It cleared the wall, it cleared the keeper. I gotta say that uh, Casey Dumont, she knows Alana Kennedy goes top left. She didn't start enough on the right. But I don't know that how much the, that Casey Dumont could have done about that. That was a stunning free kick from Alana Kennedy. And this is extraordinary. A Melbourne victory, they are they are subbing the sub. Kyra Cooney Cross, who had been on for barely a handful of minutes. The red card has meant emergency measures here, and Annabelle Martin, a right back, comes on. Jeff Hopkins has sent Tegan Allen over to left back to restore Melbourne victory's defensive four. And if that doesn't mark what should be a crazy last six and a half minutes of regulation, I don't know what is because that's probably going to go down as one of the shortest stints you'll see from a sub to come on and then get subbed off, but anything to get the three points. No, it's purely tactical, as you said. They got to shore up their back line. Tobin, Sydney will believe now. Crunching on Natasha Dowie. And the foul is going victory's way. There's aftermath here for Legazzo. Sore, but she is a tough cookie. I thought there was an interest. I thought it was just a, a solid tackle. Well, she has lunged out a little bit with the studs up, and that's possibly what the call's for. Still got Chloe Legazzo down. And Legazzo. Looking a little distressed, but definitely won't want to leave this game. Well, they've changed the call here. I think this is... I don't know how they've... Called... <laughs> it was a tough one to call. I just didn't think it was victories. Not even a drop ball, just a total reversal. And Sydney FC, through Colaprico, are now in really dangerous territory. Colaprico's free kick. Dumont couldn't take the ball. Dowie almost interrupting her keeper. Weatherholt is there, though, and is able to drive it away. Cooney Cross came on in the 77th minute, taken off in the 84th. This Melbourne victory have had to readjust their plans here and try to hold on. And this time, the foul is against Caitlin Ford, and there's a yellow card to come with it. And Lisa Devanna is quickly in to stop Ford protesting too much. Well, it's going to be exciting last five minutes here. Caitlin Ford's missed the ball completely. Christine Nan. Victory, we're already starting the subtle methods of winding seconds off the clock. Now it will be rather blatant, you suspect, as they try to survive these four minutes plus whatever stoppage might be waiting. Christadulu wins the header. Devanna, Colaprico, Christadulu under the pump and gives possession away. Barbieri, now Gilnick, turned away from the target. Barbieri. Slices that one off the outside of the boot. Well, they've been starved of possession up this end of the field, and you can see every single player drop back in here now. I think we're going to see a lot of victory City in their own half this last five minutes. McCaskill has proven to be a game-changer off the bench. Ford. Johnson. 
Safety first, down towards the touchline. Colaprico's touch is running down to the byline, but Weatherholt not going to hope it goes out for a goal kick, just decides to clear it herself, and Dowie up for the ball. Now charging through Christine Nairn. Still running, striving Nairn, but Tobin had the advantage. Bledsoe, risky pass, nearly played it straight onto the feet of Gielnik. Lagazzo, Sydney are out the left. Christodoulou. And too much on that pass. Well, they just haven't been able to link up in this final third, have they? They got back into the match through a set piece. And it just has not been clicking for them in the final third today. Puerta. Caitlin Ford was coming back from an offside position. The referee has seen it, and will whistle play dead. And that takes us into the last two minutes of regulation. And every time the ball stops now, it takes that much longer for it to restart. Same scoreline as when they last met here, all the way back in February 2014. And the Melbourne victories second win against Sydney FC if they can hold on today would be number three in 17 head-to-heads they are rarities Dowie towards the corner Weatherholt Devanna Martin's header Tobin did get the last touch. Victory ball. And they have it right where they want it. Last minute of regulation down in an attacking corner. You can't question the work rate of this, this victory team. How, how good they have been in defence. In attack, they've made sure they push numbers forward. But equally, they've always had two or three players on dangerous attacks from Sydney FC. The cover defence has been excellent. Their rest defence has been good. And they're still defending right now. Sydney trying to go end to end as quickly as they can. McCaskill. Caitlin Ford touching off. Colaprico. Board goes up with just four additional minutes for Sydney to chase an equaliser. And Melbourne victory to hold on. Kennedy, long ball. Well read in the air by Johnson. Allen. Nan sending it high. Barbieri. Happy to just boot it into touch. Polites. Tobin. Devanna. Nairn blocking the path. Devanna tries again. Legazzo had to dig deep and can't run it down. And since pegging it back to 3-2, Sydney haven't had a signature chance to snare the equaliser. Still need to keep trying to create. Central for Kennedy. McCaskill's got a motor, gets to the ball, cuts it in, but there's no one there for Sydney FC. It's all victory. Perhaps they just didn't think McCaskill was going to get there. And Natasha Dowie will clear the lines. Well, that's the difference there. Natasha Dowie makes sure she wins that ball. So it doesn't turn into attack from Sydney FC. She keeps the ball so well. She actually keeps the ball better than any other striker playing in the league right now. You can always count on it a hold up play and allow her midfield to get their breath and join the attack. Let's go. Let's go. 
She will keep the ball at all costs. Martin down the line. Dowie, this time it'll be a Sydney throw. Half of stoppage time has expired. Sydney getting desperate, trying to avoid defeat. Quetta. Waiting for the right pass to appear. McCaskill's the option. Now McCaskill straight onto the head of Gielnik. Colaprico following up. Weatherholt back to Colaprico. McCaskill. And the cross for Devetta. It sits up in the six yard box. And there's no one there for Sydney FC. Polias trying again. This time off the shoulder of Johnson McCaskill. Great save by Dumont. Nearly for the American. Sydney giving it one almighty last hurrah. Can they go to the well again? Kennedy, this time headed away by Johnson. Dowie turns out into open space and Gilnick is going to chase it down here. Trying to find safety for Melbourne victory. Into the last minute of the allocated four we go. Back to Nan. And Nan's thoughts are of the corner. Cleverly through Kennedy. And it's one on one here. This will suit Christine Nan just fine. And wins a throw as well. So smart. Well, Martin up the end there. That was a, a goal saving save there on Lisa Devana. And then DeMont with the save a couple seconds later. Here it is again. The ball in was perfect. Look at Martin here. Gets a touch on it. Lisa Devana can't get enough to steer it to goal. There it is. A famous win for Melbourne Victory. Just their third against Sydney FC in W League history. And Natasha Dowie's hat-trick is what did it. A stellar rear guard effort as Sydney FC threw everything at Victory who were down to 10 after a red card for Angie Beard. But they have held on. And perhaps their favourite away venue, Jubilee Stadium, is a winner once again. Full time, Sydney FC 2, Melbourne Victory 3. A fantastic win for Victory that really shows their credentials as a contender this season. They stay top of the W League. And this is the sort of discipline and effort that will prove memorable. Let's get the reaction with Glenn Lauder. Tayo, who else? Natasha Dowie, she hasn't got the match ball in her hand just yet, but she will soon, Tash. Congratulations, but it was uh, hard fought, wasn't it? Yeah, it's probably one of the most exhausting games I've ever played in. Um, you know, credit to Sydney, they're a great team, but it just kind of shows what we've got this season, and I hope it continues. You know, our togetherness off the pitch is really showing on the pitch, and when, the like, when it got tough tonight, I think we really dug in and every single player gave everything today. And I'm just so happy that I could help the girls with three points. And, you know, at the minute we're feeling good, you know, and I just want to keep this winning momentum going now. And that's not going to be easy, but we're doing well so far. First one was one for the highlight, really. You're hoping Phil Neville uh, is watching. Are you going to send him a DVD before the World Cup? No, it's really nice. You know, normally I'm a striker that gets a little tap-ins. Um, so it's always nice to get a Melina Reyes kind of goal. <laughs> so, no, I'm really pleased. But the three points is what I'm happy about. And it's so hard to come away to Sydney and, and get a result. And I think we thoroughly deserved it. So I'm just over the moon. Well done. Cheers. Uh, Danielle, obviously uh, a tough afternoon at the office, but it was one full of um, endeavour, wasn't it? You guys tried really hard and, and really got close to getting an equaliser at the end there. Yeah, it was a close game. I think that we waited too long till the end of the game to try and fight back, and I think it's it's a disappointing result for us. I think today we were the better soccer team, but I think it comes down to who finishes their chances, and credit to victory, they did that, so congrats to them. Was that the turning point, the first half? You had so many chances and, and couldn't put one away? Yeah, I think it, it comes down to who finishes their chances, and if you don't put the ball in the back of the net, you're not going to win soccer games, and you can play beautiful soccer, but it comes down to goals and scoring. Thanks, Danielle. Thanks for talking to us. You're welcome. Thank you to Glenn getting the reaction down at pitch level. Sarah Walsh, let's take a look at how it all happened. Just five minutes in, and Natasha Dowie got this one off to a flyer. Well, this was beautiful soccer. This was an absolutely stunning strike. Natasha Dowie was fantastic today. Her positional play 
her finishing ability. And I'll tell you what, defensively, she was outstanding. This was the, uh, the chance here for Sydney. Well, this was the goal, sorry. They did something different. They were able to draw out the defence through the middle. Calaprico getting in behind and then cutting that back. They just had no joy uh, with their service today from out wide, but uh, that was a little bit different for them. The penalty, a call that was interesting, and Bledsoe got a hand to it too. Natasha Dowie, that was her second. Yeah, well, here again, uh, victory were good when they got it, got up, uh, up to the attacking end, and here again, Tash Dowie playing off the, the shoulder of Alana Kennedy. She plays herself perfectly to hit that first time on her right. She rolls off, uses a body. Really good uh, showing for kids watching. And there's the, uh, the red card. And Alana Kennedy dispatched the free kick, but it wasn't enough in the end. And Melbourne victory held on.